6,000 subscriber looking ass. 6,000? Good grief, that's a lot of people. Guess I should start the work on the next video then, huh? If you want to upload in the next six months, yeah. All right, then. See ya! Well, fuck. So, uh, hey guys. Been a while, hasn't it? Uh, as you might have guessed from the video title, this is not the video I've spent the last eight or so months working on. Uh, fact is, I'm trying to get this one out as soon as possible, since I've got some new ideas that I really want to try out. But, um, first I should explain the longest disappearance in this channel's history. It was a simple premise. What is the lowest possible score in a Toho game? Like, I've seen people do low score challenge runs before, and Toho is one of my favorite, um, things of all time. Shocker. Plus, coming off the bat of the most technically complex video I've ever made, I was in desperate need of a palette cleanser project. And a video on a game that can be completed in less than an hour sounded pretty sweet to me. So, in May of 2023, I got started. Immediately, red flags were raised. After all, the Terraria video came out in March, so that leaves about a two month window between this project and the last. So much for the start the work on the next video then, huh? Well, I wrote that line in 2022, fully aware that April was going to be a busy month for me. But I had a plan. The Terraria video wasn't quite on track for a Christmas release, but if I could make it for January, I could just barely squeeze a smaller video in the next two months. Of course, when the Terraria video then finally came out two months after that, I had to immediately catch up on the rest of my life, and I refused to elaborate further. Anyways, after that whole kerfuffle, I was ready to make some goddamn videos. Two months of being unable to edit, at the height of my popularity too, I'd been thinking about nothing else for weeks, and I'd come up with some ideas. Actually, quite a lot of them, but that's for later. What I want to focus on right now are some of the basic principles that would actually achieve the lowest score. In short, uh, wait a minute. Instead of restating my five impossible requests, why don't I just show you the edit? This is one of the parts that I completed, after all. Alright, before we rev our engines, we should probably take a look at the track we're racing. There are six stages in Imperishable Night, with alternate pathways on stages 4 and 6. We'll be following the Magic Team, as they show us the basics of this pointless challenge run. Arguably, the most important part of the run happens before it even begins. Toho 8 is one of the few Windows era games that you can choose your starting lives, and it is the only game that lets you choose more than 5. The thing is though, is that going above the default 3 lives incurs a score penalty, which gets worse with the number of lives. 7 is quite a bit more than 3, and as a result, end of stage bonuses get a massive 95% reduction, literally shaving digits off the score. This is also partly why I'm playing on easy modo, since stacking a 50% score reduction on top of that is just the cherry on the cake. Of course, playing on the easiest difficulty also makes the game, well, easier, which directly leads to my next strategy, avoiding grazing. Grazing occurs when a bullet or laser comes dangerously close to your hitbox, without actually making contact. This show of skill is punished with at least 2000 points, so avoiding narrowly avoiding bolts is crucial to the plan. With that said, grazing is simply unavoidable in many circumstances. The patterns are just too dense, but the solution is simple. Kill enemies, right? Wrong! Shooting at enemies is yet another way to gain points, and the enemy part of that isn't even required. Besides, despite playing as the magic team, our shot power should always be weak, due to yet another principle of our run. This is a point item. Can you guess what it does? Good grief, there's so many ways to get points in this game, it might as well hand them out for free. And of course it does. Anyways, back to items. They're another way to make the funny number go up, and another thing we need to avoid. Luckily, the two biggest offenders, power and point, are mostly dropped by enemies, which, with notable exceptions, shouldn't happen in this run. Star items, which are cancelled bullets, also shouldn't happen, though usually when they do, they automatically magnet towards the player. There's just one more problematic pickup, and that's the time orb. Unique to Imperishable Night, they appear under a variety of conditions, most notably when the gauge is at either end. They also appear when the enemy familiars are destroyed, and if the player collects a spell card bonus. Which leads us to the final piece of basic information, and yes, this has all been basic information. Ever since Embodiment of Scarlet Devil released in 2002, yes that's what this date means, spell cards have been a staple of Toho games. Clearing one without using a bomb or a life grants you the spell card bonus, the other source of 8 digit score increases. To avoid the bonus, every single spell card in the entire run will be timed out, so you better get used to hearing this sound, cause you'll be hearing it a lot! So did you catch the second red flag? It's the entire chapter. Apart from the sneaky strategy of starting with 7 lives, I am asking the impossible. 
Yes, it's possible to beat Imperishable Knight without grazing, and yes, it's possible to beat it without shooting, but they're mutually exclusive, and that's to say nothing of the items that we're forced to pick up. But I had an ace up my sleeve. One of the ideas I had come up during my two-month brainstorming period was to use a TAS. If you're unfamiliar... Tool-assisted speedrun, tool-assisted superplay, or just TAS is a playthrough of a game that uses specialized software to overcome human limitations and perform with perfect precision. As such, the only remaining limitations on a TAS are ones imposed by the game itself, which TAS runs don't modify. Everything done in a TAS run is technically possible, just requiring a perfect player in perfect conditions. But if you think humanity is close to doing that, you're dead wrong. At the time of writing, the Minecraft Any% percent Set Seed World Record is 1 minute and 38 seconds of in-game time. Comparatively, the TAS run in the exact same category using the exact same tactics is less than 20 seconds. Yeah, there's a reason we don't compare TAS runs to real ones. Since we've already allowed third-party software in this challenge, I see no reason why we shouldn't use a TAS to find the lowest score possible. Creating a replay isn't a problem. That's kind of what a TAS run is, really. And I mean, come on! It's like a video game Rube Goldberg machine! The rule of cool demands that we try this. Okay, we're back. We're back. Okay, so that was the plan, and it absolutely failed. Just spectacular failure. I spent two weeks trying to get Hourglass to work, and I couldn't do it. I went so far as setting up Windows XP virtual machines to get it to work, but that just resulted in even more failure. To add insult to injury, I got pretty much no footage from this experiment. Of what little I did record, most of it is pure black, because of an issue I was having with the VMs. Another portion of it is just the Windows XP desktop, which doesn't show anything that was happening outside of the virtual machine, and the few clips where you can see my desktop and all the important things going on there. Well, my desktop wallpaper is a fucking selfie! Well, that sucked, but I have a few more ideas. None of which were getting thrown into the hospital. Before you worry, I am fine. I'm narrating this video, aren't I? Uh, I guess it could be an AI trained on my voice, but as far as I'm aware, that doesn't exist, and I do not want it to exist. Please never do that. Anyways, yeah, I got hospitalized, and things had changed by the time I got out. As it turns out, getting Hourglass to work on a Windows XP virtual machine is as simple as getting someone else to do it for you. Apparently, they figured it out in like an afternoon because they were bored. Uh, yeah, that's... Um... Why do I get the feeling I'm not as smart as I was two years ago? Now, as cool as I thought the task would be, it ended up being extremely underwhelming. Trying to wide swing patterns of bullets could take hundreds of consecutive frame-perfect inputs to get right. And while that is technically possible using task tools, it's computationally improbable to find the correct sequence. There are more input permutations for a half second of gameplay than there are stars in the galaxy. Plus, the game isn't deterministic. You know, there are patterns that follow you around, and Hourglass wasn't working properly, so RNG was being random. Which means that the 1 in a that's a massive fucking number permutation was constantly changing. And who knows, the right sequence just might not exist without testing every possible set of inputs against every possible game state we can never know for sure if the limit's been reached. This should have been the point when I realized that the video premise was doomed and scrapped the project to work on something else. Unfortunately, I did a little bit too much thinking to be deterred by that. Sure, my video premise was fundamentally flawed, but I could just swap another thesis in, right? Try this on for size. The cost of perfection is infinite, but I don't have that type of time. No, if anything short of perfection is to be enough, then this run will be enough. By changing the main idea to be a critique of perfection, the project can be salvaged. Just in time, too, because we're fast approaching my channel's five-year anniversary one. No, that can't be so soon. All right, double time. This video has to be happening now. Every waking moment of the next few weeks was spent on this script, rephrasing things over and over, trying to repurpose as much as I could from the old script to the new. Rewriting anything that didn't further the main point, trimming old ideas that no longer served a purpose, I could not think about anything else. The timeline's a bit blurry in my mind, but I think this is also the point that life starts to intervene again. While my mind stayed on the video, I had very little time to actually write the script. This, as it turns out, was extremely frustrating, and that's why I'm writing this video at the expense of my sleep. It was like 2 a.m. when I wrote this. I'm writing it now, or then, so I don't agonize over it later. The resulting script was messy, but functional, so once again it was full steam ahead. I went to record the narration and found out very quickly I need to invest in a pop filter. I still haven't. For my previous videos, I used the Valve Index as a microphone, but that is no longer the case. You actually saw it in my uh, Terraria video. Anyways, because the script was so long, I decided to record it in multiple parts. This would have been fine if I didn't get sick immediately after recording the first piece. My immune system is usually pretty good, but oh boy was I getting the ever-loving shit kicked out of me. And even when I felt fine, my voice sounded terrible, so I couldn't record either way. 
The narration of my videos is the very first thing to go into the timeline, so without that, I can't edit. The only progress I could make on the video was to tinker with the script. A little drama here, some cheeky wordplay there. Maybe it was the near-death experience earlier in the project, but my voice just wasn't recovering. Between all the issues I was having with this video, coupled with the inexorable passage of time, and some personal matters too, well, let's just say my mental health wasn't doing so great. I don't want to linger on it, but it was definitely seeping into my writing. Incessant revisions of the script kept getting darker, further clashing with the original script. The irony of being unable to stop trying to perfect the script about imperfection was completely lost on me. After a while, the whole point was lost on me too. Another failed premise. How about this one? I'm making the videos I want to make, not what the algorithm drives me to. I mean, it's true. There's no way that a Toho video does as well as a Terraria video. It's not the view counts that drive me. I'm making this video because I want to make this video. Right? Alright, what about making the video just slightly underwhelming and have the important bit like in the post credits? I don't know how many ideas like this I iterated through, but I was getting nowhere. Days turned to weeks, turned to months. I barely remember the summer. Every time I rewrote the script, an artifact would get left behind, and eventually the video didn't make sense to me. I came to the conclusion that the only way to write it was to not know the thesis at all. Make that the central idea. Maybe, just maybe, it'd work. I had done it. I had written a script and recorded the narration. It was long, it was rambly, but it was functional. Probably. I couldn't tell anymore. I want to say that I got roughly 40% of the way through the editing. Of the eight chapters in the video, the first four were more or less finished, and the sixth chapter, where I performed the task, was about halfway through. But the seventh chapter was the key. It was the one where I pulled back the curtains and revealed the true purpose of the video. Getting it right would make or break the video. And while I had some ideas, executing them took a lot more work. Luckily, I had a solid foundation and a song that I wasn't allowed to use. I mean, I could go and get permission, but it wasn't worth the hassle. All this effort and for what? The seventh chapter had some issues I wanted to work out anyways. Despite how many times I'd told myself, and others, that this would be the one, I went back to the drawing board. I rewrote the script three times, cutting its runtime down to about a minute and a half. It wasn't pretty, but it would be done, and that was all I cared about. I checked through, making sure that the rest of the work needed for the video would be relatively simple. By now, I could barely bring myself to open up the project file. I didn't want to just bin it, but I was so done with everything that had happened up to this point that pretty much anything would set me over the edge. Anything. Like the complete lack of usable footage for Chapter 5. The chapter where I set up eight Windows XP virtual machines. So, that brings us to today. I suppose the lesson here is that if the video premise is broken, it's broken. Trying to fix what can't be fixed is the fastest way to end up in production hell. So fail fast to find out what won't work before eight months fly by. Unrelated, but uh, thanks for all the support on this channel. Uh, 20,000 subscribers is, I feel like I should be doing some sort of milestone video. Uh, if you want to see that and have any ideas, feel free to let me know. But other than that, this video is over. So uh, see ya.